I bet you're wondering who or what the heck XLR8 is. Well, they're PNY, now with a dedicated gaming division, so if you see this name, you'll know they're all about PC gaming. They manufacture everything from SSDs to RAM to graphics cards, and on that note, in light of Blue Sky's overkill spec sheet, I asked them to send a GTX 1060, a budget-friendly alternative for the 1080p and light 1440p gamer. My first impression looks pretty dope. XLR8 proudly boasts the black and red color scheme, a bit cliche, sure, but consistent to say the least, you won't have an issue finding hardware to match. A brief summary of the spec sheet up front, most of you know by now, a 1060 is a 1060. 1280 CUDA cores, a boost clock of 1797 MHz, which is a mild jump from the reference frequency, and 6GB of VRAM. The card utilizes a single 8-pin, also a bump from the stock 6-pin, but still sips on power in relation to previous generations. Lengthwise, the card's a little under 9 and a quarter inches, so it should fit in most ITX cases. It comes with a backplate, a staple in my book, but with backwards writing that I wish they'd rotate around. You'll find red LEDs under the two fans along with a prominent GTX 1060 logo up front. My only complaint here, the weird extrusion in the frame. It serves no functional purpose as far as I can tell, and could potentially limit case compatibility, especially with that left side panel. Other than that, build quality is on point. The shroud isn't flimsy, and the cooler underneath sports copper pipes and aluminum sinks, the kind of combination for which you'll want to look. Temperatures under load at stock never pass 75C, even in a small form factor case with minimal airflow. The fans do crank up quite a bit though, with the stock curve. Not as loud as the Founders Edition of course, but will become audible at around 30% fan speed. Speed. By default, the card will never pass 50C, unless you're doing something very insane with your graphics card, and the sound was still tolerable. In fact, most hard drives are louder than this card is under load. Almost always a perk of third-party coolers. Now let's talk performance. If you've seen GTX 1060 reviews in the past, this one's probably nothing new, in terms of frame rates anyway. I ran the latest GeForce driver, 378.78, in four different games which pull PC resources in unique ways. The computer in question, my ITX PC build from a few months ago. It's sporting an i5-7600K clocked to 4.4GHz and 16GB of 2.8GHz DDR4. Pairing a GTX 1060 with something like an i7-7700K or an i7-5820K wouldn't really make much sense in the real world, so we won't be doing that here. A card this size fits with plenty of room to spare, even in something as compact as this Fractal Design Node 202. After a quick boot and driver install, it was off to the races. Now seeing as though this is my first official benchmarking video of a GTX 1060, which is kind of hard to believe, I've just never owned one until now, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I was running each of these games in at least the Ultra preset in 1080p, something my old GTX 970 could barely handle, and was impressed by what I saw. First up, Witcher 3 received a respectable frame rate. We didn't reach 60 FPS on average, but bear in mind this is Witcher 3 on Ultra, which will tax the living hell out of any modern GPU. And at that, 39 ain't bad for a minimum. I expected worse. Moving on to GTA 5, good old 69 on average, 47 for the min. GTA 5 is an excellent example of balance between GPU and CPU intensities. Gameplay was smooth and rich, especially with everything maxed out, save anti-aliasing. Battlefield 1 is another beautifully optimized game. In my experience, minimums and averages are always very close, and that's exactly what you want to see. A staggering 86 on average here is superb for a card in the mid $200 price range. Lastly, a CPU intensive title, City Skylines. Won't tell us much about how powerful the graphics card is, other than to say that you could swap this card for one three times its price, and you likely won't see much of a difference in frame rate, making the 1060 a sweet spot for most gamers in 1080p. It is no secret at this point that the RX 480 is a very compelling competitor. If we ask a room full of 100 people which one they would prefer, I'm sure around 50% would say the AMD card, the other 50% would say Nvidia for various reasons. I prefer Nvidia for their software, but I prefer AMD for their value. It just comes down to which one you weigh more. But if you ask me, this particular card I think could look a bit better, but it definitely falls into the GTX 1060 sweet spot in terms of price. It's also manufactured by a reputable brand. I use PNY SSDs all the time. So if you're in the market for a green team car that looks favorably on your budget, this 1060 here is the way to go. And as always, you can find links to the card showcased in this video in the description. Both my Amazon and Newegg affiliate links are tied to those. So if you do purchase something via the link, I do get a small kickback. It goes a long way. I do appreciate it. Give this one a thumbs up if you thought it was cool. Thumbs down for the opposite. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already. I will catch you in the next video. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us. Thank you.